So today we're going to be moving on and start talking about Yu Yu Hakusho. So it looks like we're running through the 90s. And it is considered an action supernatural. But I'm willing to bet that most of you that are watching this right now have at least heard of this one before. Even if you haven't seen it, I'm sure you at least know of it. Since it is a pretty popular one, but anyways, I'll go through the plot pretty quickly since there is quite a lot of stuff that can go into here, but for the most part, it'll try to keep it short. So the story focuses on the main character, Yusuke, and he is a young teenager that happens to be very reckless, like he's always getting into fights all the time, and he's not very popular with the ladies, and of course there's also a lot of rumors always spread around with him. So it's a pretty typical day at school, he ends up getting slapped by one of his good friends named Kikyo, his teachers are always out to screw with him, and his mother doesn't hold any responsibility at all. So on this typical day for him, he sees a kid playing with a soccer ball in the middle of the road, and of course he tells him that it's dangerous. But as Yusuke was crossing the street, he looks back and he sees that the ball ended up going on the middle of the road, and the kid ends up trying to get it, and there's an oncoming car coming by. So Yusuke ends up trying to save the kid, and he ends up pushing him out of the way and risking his life, and he dies. The end. Okay, so yes, Yusuke actually dies, but when he dies though, he's actually a ghost. So he's very dazed and confused about this whole thing until he sees someone named Botan, who happens to be a girl wearing a pink komodo and flies on a paddle, and she introduces herself as the pilot of the River of Sticks. So basically, she's like the Grim Reaper, but just, you know, doesn't look anything like the Grim Reaper. Yusuke even makes a comment about that. So after flying around town, he ends up going back to his house and he ends up seeing that there's a whole bunch of people from his school showing up there praying for him. So a lot of them are sad, and one of them happens to be angry, and that happens to be Kawabara. He considers himself a rival of Yusuke because he's always trying to beat him up all the time, but ends up getting his ass kicked, and because he died so soon, well, he's pissed that he was never able to win against him. And of course, two of his piece of shit teachers just happen to be laughing about the whole thing because, well, like I said, they're pieces of shit. So there's a lot of mixed emotions happening here. But eventually, Botan ends up taking Yusuke to go to the spirit world. So to get to the spirit world, they had to cross over the river of sticks, and no, unfortunately, you don't get to hear Mr. Roboto playing at this part. So Yusuke ends up meeting Botan's master, and that happens to be King Ebna Jr. Basically, the son of King Ebna, but he mostly does all the hard work. So he offers Yusuke a deal where if he can overcome a trial, where he has to carry a golden egg with him at all times to bring in positive energy. And the egg can turn into two things, it can turn into a giant monster that would devour his soul in all eternity, or it will allow his soul to be bring back from the dead. So while he's a ghost, he's always trying to do the right thing, like try to help out his friend Kikyo, and even helps Kuwabara study. And I'm pretty sure this part coming up should be pretty obvious, and that is that, yes, eventually Yusuke ends up gaining his body back, but after becoming human again, he ends up getting a superpower called a ray gun. And no, it's not a literal ray gun, he basically shoots a spirit energy balls out of his fingers, but he can only do it once per day. And he also does use quite a few gadgets along the way, because now he's just trying to hunt for demons that are always trying to wreak havoc around the world. Like for an example, there are some forbidden items that have been stolen. And these forbidden items could have potential to destroy the world, so of course, we don't want that shit to happen. So yeah, I think that's basically what you need to know about the story in case you've never seen this one before. And just to sum it up here, all I gotta say is that it's actually a really cool concept. So now we got that over with, now we'll start talking about the other things, like the animation. And for the most part, the animation is really, really good. So everything is really nice looking, the fight scenes are pretty badass, and the overall design is actually really nice looking too, although I do have one complaint about the designs, but it's just a minor thing. So that minor thing happens to be is that I do find that some of the character looks could have been done a little bit better. Now yes, the characters are very recognizable, mostly for their faces and their hair, but I find that the clothing is like super plain, I mean, use case is wearing plain green, and then Kawabara's is he wearing plain blue, and then there's two characters they didn't get around to talking about yet, and that happened to be Kurama and Hiei. But basically, they just happen to wear plain purple and plain black, although sometimes Hiei likes to take off a shirt every once in a while. But yeah, personally, I think they could have added a little bit more signature to it, other than like the facial features and whatnot. But I suppose looking at this in another direction is that it actually looks more realistic, since most people just wear plain colored clothes. And how often do you see someone dressing up like something from Final Fantasy? Well, not very often, don't you? 
But that's really my only minor complaint. And like I said, it's only a minor thing. Obviously, I'm not going to be like one of those snobs who goes like, Oh, well, you know, this one thing about this show like really sucks. So because of that, this is the worst show ever. And that's just fucking stupid. But either way, like I already said, everything else is just really good looking. And I don't have any major complaints. So now let's start talking about the music. And the music is really good in this one. As again, I don't have any major complaints about it, but really, everything suits the tone really well, suits every moment, whether it be happy, sad, or even funny. And as for the intro and ending theme, they're both really awesome too, very catchy. So as again, can't go wrong here. So now, let's start moving on and talk about the voice acting. And if I say so myself, I still think it's actually pretty good. But I'd say it's mostly the main cast that makes it so good. So you have Justin Cook, Laura Bailey, Cynthia Kranz, Christopher Sabat, Sean Tagu, John Bergmere, and Chuck Hubber, which all do a pretty good job in suiting their roles really well, so I don't really have any complaints there. But as for the other roles, some of them are good, some of them are kinda okay, and then there are some that are just not so great, but nothing I would say is horrible or not bad enough to hammer down a bunch of nails in my ears. But as I said, you still got some pretty good ones, like you got Kyle Hebert, you got Vic Mignogna, Linda Young, Travis Willingham, and Monica Ryle, just to name a few. So while the voice acting is not perfect, I do find that the main cast is really what made it shine. So now, as for the overall score, well, if I were to rate this one, I'm going to be repeating myself quite a lot, but yes, I'll give this one a 10 out of 10. So obviously, it's not perfect, it's not the best thing you will ever see in your life, but it's just a really fucking awesome show that is a huge favorite of mine. And as I said in the Gunbuster review, I like this show just as much as I did for the first time I watched it. So yes, the story in this one is just a really awesome concept that really does work really well, and of course the characters are just really awesome characters that are really well developed and very likable. And you also got a good mixture where you got some like action, you got some supernatural, you got a little bit of mystery, then you got some happy, you sad, and then you got some funny shit. All around, it's just a really entertaining adventure, especially the fact that of all the shit you get to see Yusuke get to go through, and there's also just a lot of memorable scenes as well. So if you have at least heard about Yu Yu Hakusho but you just haven't seen it for some reason, then it's one that I can highly recommend. But if you have seen it but you haven't seen it in a really long time, then it's at least worth watching again. Now I don't know what else I can add here other than the fact that this is actually a really popular one and I can totally see why it's popular because it's fucking awesome. But yes, it's a big favorite of mine among others. <laughs> <laughs> 